All right. Call the May 4th uh, Spokane City Council briefing legislative session together. Um, Ms. Clerk, would you please read the roll? Council President Beggs. Present. Council Member Burke. We, we're having a hard time. Council, Council Member Cathcart. Can you hear Present. me better? Cal, um, uh, barely hear you. Oh, I'll try to speak louder. Council Member Kinnear. Here, can barely hear you. Council Member Mum. Here. Council Member Stratton. Here. Council Member Wilkerson. Here. Let the record reflect that all council members are present. All right, with that, I'll turn it over to Mr. Crago for the advanced agenda for May 11th. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. First up is uh, Dan Kegley. We'll talk about a contract amendment with the Vista. I know Dan is on here. Dan, I think you're on mute. It helps if it, it does help if I do on you. Um, item number one is a contract amendment, amendment with the Vista Utilities on the small generator intercom connect, or interconnection agreement. This allows uh, the operators at Upper River to operate the switch, which gives us better uh, operational flexibility with our hydroelectric plant. Any questions? All right, thank you. Thanks, Dan. Uh, next up is item number two, a revenue agreement with Viola ES. For Chris Avert's gonna give us the briefing. Good afternoon. Uh, today I'm seeking approval for a disposal agreement with Viola ES. Uh, disposal rates for this agreement would be our standard published rates and the revenue is anticipated to be $100,000 annually. Okay, thank you very much. Next up, Stan Bueller is going to give us a low bid uh, acceptance for La Riviere. Item three is the proposed low bid contract for the Hamilton Street Intersection Improvements Project with La Riviere from Rathdrum, Idaho, being the low bidder at $3,316,831, to which we propose to set aside a 10% administrative reserve. This project constructs Signal improvements at six intersections on Hamilton between Desmet and North Foot Hills, as well as replaces curb ramps at those intersections. The low bid from Bacon Concrete was approximately 50,000 or about 1.5% over the engineer's estimate. Two other bids were received. This project is federally funded. Don't see any questions. Okay. Thank I don't you. Know. Item four is a report of the mayor on payments, claims, warrants, and payroll. Item five is the city council minutes. Moving on to the legislative agenda. Uh, first up is resolution 0028. Nathan will give us a uh, briefing on a declaring Wilson and Company's sole source. Yes, this item is to approve a sole source contract with um, Wilson and Company for work on the Rowan Force Main project. Uh, per the BNSF licensing agreement, we're required to have Wilson on site for inspection services at all times during uh, construction. And two thirds will be funded by WashDOT. Questions? Okay, thank you, Nathan. Next up is Terrell Black, going to do resolution 0029, which is regarding a sub area planning process. Uh, good afternoon. This is Terrell Black from planning. Uh, this resolution was briefed at study session on April 16th. Uh, this will direct planning staff uh, to begin community outreach and engagement. Uh, to consider expanding a zoning overlay in the North Foothills area. Uh, this area is uh, in the area of Hamilton, Nevada and North Foothills Drive where the Water Department and Gunnega Prep are currently located. 
Um, there's uh, this is the vicinity where there's a proposed uh, Catholic Charities uh, housing called Gonzaga Haven, as well as the Northeast Middle School uh, by Spokane Public Schools is also planned. Uh, letters of support from uh, both those agencies are in the agenda packet. Any questions? And I told Terrell she could hold off on a more a fuller presentation until next week since we heard from her not long ago. So, Yes, I will have a map at least for next week, but this is just the resolution to, to start the action, not the action itself. Okay, final is an ordinance, uh, C35899, which will be a series of uh, adopting building code changes. Uh, Dermot Murphy. I think he's briefed that before. I for think us. we have. It's the final reading for the ordinance. So yeah, and it, the same as the hearing right after. So agreed. So I think we're good. All right. Um, is there a motion to appre- approve the advance agenda for May 11th? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor of approval of the May 11th agenda, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any nay? uh, Any opposed nay? Abstentions? Uh, The agenda is approved. Before we turn to um, today's consent agenda, uh, it looks like the governor has extended um, part of the stay-at-home order for another month, but there are still a few things up in the air about uh, public meetings, and I would invite a motion um, to continue with holding our legislative session at 3.30 for the next meetings of May 11th and May 18th. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Abstentions? Okay, that brings us to today's consent, and looks like we're going to want to um, suspend the rules to add one consent uh, agenda item of a contract Amendment with Volunteers of America. Uh, but first, is there a motion to suspend the council rules? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on what looks uh, appears as item seven in our consent agenda? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving item seven, oh, of all those in favor of suspending the rules, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed name? Abstentions. Okay. Um, And so now would be a motion to add it to the consent agenda, although when we get to it, Ms. Pfister will read the whole thing uh, since it hasn't been noticed before. So is there a motion to add item 7 to the consent agenda? Second. Second. All right. Any discussion about adding that? Item 7. Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor of adding Item 7, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay? Abstentions? Mm -hmm. Item 7 is added. And Ms. Pfister, if you will read the consent agenda and including the full extent of Item 7. Reports, contracts, and claims. Number one, contract amendment with Pacifica Law Group, Seattle, Washington, for outside special counsel providing legal services and advice to the city regarding the matter of Save Magazine et al. versus City of Spokane et al. Increase not to exceed $100,000. Total contract amount, $150,000. Number two, low bid award of Bacon Concrete Incorporated, Spokane, Washington, for the Spokane Arterial Curb Ramp Project South, $816,101. An administrative reserve of $81,610.10, which is 10% of the contract price, will be set aside. 
Number three, approve budgeted performance management office contractual service funds to be used to extend funding of existing Volt contracts, Spokane Valley, Washington, for critical path resources, $145,000. Number four, subrecipient contract with Spokane County for the disbursement of funds from the JAG-19 Department of Justice Award for the term of October 1, 2018 through to September 30, 2022, $62,744. Item number five, a report of the mayor of pending claims and payments of previously approved obligations, including those of Parks and Library through April 24, 2020, total $6,684,176.28 with Parks and Library claims approved with the respective boards. Warrants excluding Parks and Library total $6,058,938.13. Item number six, City Council meeting minutes for April 20, 2020. Item number seven, contract amendment with Volunteers of America of Eastern Washington and Northern Idaho adding COVID-19 emergency housing grant funding from the Department of Commerce increase of $72,830. Total contract amount not to exceed $305,830. Is there anything additional you'd like me to read for seven? Okay. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Any abstentions? Um, the consent agenda is approved unanimously. And that brings us, we have one legislative item having deferred the um, landlord tenant ordinances until July. And if you'd like <clears throat> to read that, Ms. Fister. Ordinance C-35907, amending ordinance number C-35857, passed by the City Council December 16, 2019, and entitled, An Ordinance Adopting the Annual Budget of the City of Spokane for 2020, making appropriations to various funds of the City of Spokane Government for the fiscal year ending December 31, 2020, and providing it shall take effect immediately upon passage and declaring an emergency and appropriating funds in. General Fund Mayor's Office from Reserve for Budget Adjustment, $24,116 to Director Office of the Mayor from Range 40, Step 6 to Range 51, Step 6, $15,424 and to Constituent Services Coordinator from Range 22, Step 6 to Range 32, Step, step 6, $8,692. This action adjusts salary ranges following a review of incumbents' responsibilities and job descriptions. We previously had a pretty extensive report from HR and lots of documents, but anyone have any further comments, questions? I see Megan is on the screen. Yes, Council Member Stratton. I just would like to make a quick comment before the vote. Um, I really truly believe that the administration has every right uh, to have these positions upgraded. I respect and appreciate that. Um, also, I have absolutely no problem with the individuals that are currently in those positions. I would like everybody to know that. My problem with this special ordinance is really about the size of the increase. Uh, many of you know that a couple years ago, there was some negotiations that allowed certain uh, positions in certain classifications to go from a step six in one range to a immediate step six in another range. And that's what's happening here. And I think that it's, they're, they're big amounts, they're large increases. And so I, I have no problem with the, the mayor's office doing this. My um, concern is with the process and that um, the, the, the step process. So I will um, be voting no on this, but I wanted to be very clear why, and hopefully um, we can continue to work with um, negotiations to try and find a better way to do this so that individuals can start, can get increases, they can go to a new range, they can be promoted, but they have a gradual step process that they go through um, every year. So. I will be uh, voting no on that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Stratton. Other comments? Questions? If I understood correctly from staff, that issue, um, Councilmember Stratton, is currently in a collective bargaining agreement, but when those come up for renegotiation, that might be a good time to look at that. So... Um, the only other comment I would make after we got the extensive documentation of the reevaluation of those positions, I also 
asked HR for some assistance in reevaluating uh, administration of the council office, and they've cooperated and come up with um, uh, new. We worked together with a new job description and things, and that'll be coming forward at another time, but not today. So, um, okay, all those in favor of special budget ordinance as listed today, please indicate by saying aye. And aye. Aye. Um, so I heard Councilmember Burke and Councilmember Mum, or Councilmember Kinnear is aye, Councilmember Cathcart, Councilmember Wilkerson, and Council President Beggs is an aye, and that anyone opposed? <laughs> Opposed. Okay. Thank you, Councilmember Stratton, and no abstentions. Thank you. So that um, recorded at least five eyes, and so that is now approved. And then I don't know if there's any other – I don't think there's any other legislative matters. We have arranged to hear an uh, update from uh, a couple of folks at SNAP. I see Julie Honenkamp on there and Carol Welts. I'm not sure which one of you is going to go first, but uh, you have the floor. <clears throat> Make sure you're not muted, though. Julie's going to take us off here. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, Julie, you're still on mute, it looks like. There you go. Good afternoon. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can figure out how to share screen here. Can you see that? We can. Great. Thank you. I have figured out how to master Zoom and uh, Teams, but WebEx is new to me, so hopefully this will go smoothly. So. Um, thank you for the opportunity to talk to you about uh, energy assistance and wow. rental assistance as well. And I'm joined this afternoon by Carol Welts, who oversees our energy programs as well as our homeless services efforts. So um, just a little background on SNAP again. We are now 54 years old. We serve primarily Spokane County and operate over 30 programs in seven different locations throughout the county. Um, we're hoping today to talk a little bit about some of the items we've heard um, as far as feedback in the community about rental assistance. And um, in order to access rental assistance, you have to go through the energy assistance system. So, um, Carol, would you kind of walk us through that, please? You bet. Julie, can you make that any bigger? Thank you. I couldn't see the smaller version. Thanks for having us today. Um, so uh, yeah, we serve energy assistance here in Spokane and uh, a lot of great things are happening right now. And so uh, with our federal programs, they've given us extra, um, the ability to serve extra money for energy assistance. So we have $500 bonus grants available for people. But the other thing that they did was um, change how we serve our rental assistance, which is usually just a smaller portion of our grant. So right now, if you came into an office or called in because we're working remotely, uh, you could get energy assistance, which has uh, the federal guidelines of 125% of the federal poverty level. So that money goes directly to the utilities. On our uh, emergent, other emergency assistance, there's no income guidelines for those. So uh, people can just be past due or have a hardship or know they're not going to be able to pay their bill and they can access that. They don't have to wait till they get off shut off notice, even though they're not giving those right now. But So this is a nice one for people who uh, may have a little bit higher income even uh, that they could access these funds. And normally they can get this up to $350 once, once a year. Um, right now we have some extra programs going on where they can get, an, an, again, there an additional uh, grant that's available. And we have a lot of senior um, money available for people who have a VISTAs or utilities. So uh, they have to be 60 years or older and they can get it one time a year. So we got a, lot, a variety of programs that can help people with their energy needs right now. Uh, you wanna turn the ding? <laughs> so our, our low income home energy assistance program, it's funded by HHS. And um, 
The nice thing is, it used to be we could only have 5% of our funding used for rental assistance. So this year I had put it, rental assistance and uh, furnace repair. So this year I had put aside $180,000 and we had already spent that. But with COVID-19 coming up, they said that we could go up to 15%. So I have another $400,000 available for us to be able to use for rental assistance. So what happens is somebody comes in, they apply for energy assistance, and then we can also, if they're past due on the rent, pay up to $1,000 for that household uh, to be able to pay their rent. So it's, it's a great program. So, um, and this money is available until the end of uh, September this year. Um, you want to turn the... And do you pay that directly to the landlord? So to give you an idea of what 125% of the federal poverty level looks like, for a household of one, that's 1301 a month. But if you had a household of eight, you could make $4,500 a month and still qualify, right? So there's a variance depending on how many people are in the household. Carol, um, Carol, this is Brian. Just so quick, quick question. You can see, yeah. Oh, Carol, it's Brian. When you um, pay the rent, do you pay that directly to the landlord? Yes, we do. Okay, thanks. Yes, we do. The only time we don't pay direct with our energy assistance once in a while, people have heat included in their rent. And so that's the only time we pay directly to the client. But all other payments always go to the landlord. And the landlord has to be willing to accept the rent. And also to say that uh, from the time that the rent is due, that they will make sure that they have housing for 30 days. So it ensures that they're not going anywhere. If, if they owe over $1,000 on that rent, then they have to have some kind of a payment plan for the rest of it, you know, some kind of arrangements. So what we know about Spokane is that 37% of the renters are, yeah, <laughs> I'm not doing so good there, 37% of renters in Spokane County. Uh, so we figured about 71,000 rental households, right? And 17,000 of those are paying more than 50% of their monthly income on rent. So that's when things were good, right? So now things aren't so good and they're having to pay this. Um, so we know we know that households are in a very um, hard predicament right now, and you know the moratorium's on, and so that's helpful for a little while. But what happens is you still have to pay the rent eventually. Like nobody's going to forgive that. And so, uh, you know, we've, uh, with the extra money, we figured we could help about 400 households with rental assistance. Uh, you know, we have that money through nine September, the end of September this year, uh, but. The concern, of course, is that there's a lot more than 400 households that are going to need help here. And again, this is only people who fit the 125% or less of the federal poverty level. So, you know, we've heard some comments about, you know, SNAP will have this covered for rental assistance, but what we have covered is a pretty small piece of the puzzle. And we're going to have to figure out other ways to be able to help people uh, to get through this. Is there another slide, Julie? We said it. I have another question for you. Um... Carol, Carol, I have another question for you. Yes. If the city were to provide you more money uh, in order for rental assistance, do you have the administrative capacity all set uh, in place to yes. serve more people? Okay. Yes, we do. Okay. So we've been bringing staff back on. This is usually our slow time, and we usually lay staff off. We've been bringing staff back on, and although they're working remotely, um, have the ability to serve. And so... Uh, yeah, we're pretty well suited and have processes in place to do this. Um, Great. Thanks. So, yes. You know, just some of the other, other help available, just so you know, is that the U-Help Utility Program, we're also doing that right now. So, uh, you know, lots of different aid available when somebody walks through the door. We're going to be asking them the questions, you know, to see what they do need so we can help them one time when they walk through to make it as easy as possible, yet being good stewards of the money. So can I answer any questions? Julie, can you go back to the slide before? This is Karen. I, I just want to make sure some people that might want to access or talk to somebody, they just call SNAP. Yeah, 456-SNAP, and just make an energy assistance appointment. And, and they can do some general uh, resourcing right on the phone, you know, to find out whether they uh, would be eligible or not. Um, the nice thing about these uh, programs, too, is they've said some unusual stuff. We only have to count 30 days income, which usually we have to count three months. So that means if you've been off for the last month, 
somebody who wouldn't normally be eligible would be eligible now. And um, what's the other piece of that? Uh, oh, we don't have to count the stimulus payment and we don't have to count the bonus unemployment either as income. So that's the benefit to households too who think they might be over income. That's great, thank you. Yeah. Here. So that started already, so they could call tomorrow? Yeah, they can call today. <laughs> so, yes, we're already taking applications. I think we've served on the rental assistance about 130 right now. Uh, so you figure for each one of those. We have an, about 1.5 million left for the rest of the season. That means we can do about... Uh, Twenty-two hundred rents. Um, yeah. Just. Uh, oh, she's not here. <laughs> Mechanism. In place if, uh, if there's a ways, uh, if, you know, funding was available. I'm, I'm not sure what the going to be for people who are uh, um, homeowners who are going to be behind. I know we'll have some we have some mortgage assistance programs, but uh, yeah. Okay, well, that's all I have. Any Okay. Thank you, Carol, so much. And Julie, did you have anything more? I didn't. Just wanted to be sure to let you know that we're here to help. And while we do have enough for 400 households, it's surely not going to meet the needs. So um, let us know what we can do to be of assistance. All right. Well, I really appreciate uh, both of your work and your whole team. Uh, thanks so much. And hopefully we'll be able to make some use of that infrastructure that you already have set up. So uh, any qu more you. questions from anyone else? On this, um, for the good of the order, uh, Tanya Wallace is going to give us a financial update on Thursday during study session. I'm going to meet with her at 4.30. So if you have any questions you specifically want her to address, if you could email me. And Councilmember Kinnear, I have your internet one already uh, in my mind. But if anyone else, go ahead and shoot me an email. Um, any other Oh, and tonight we're on, most of us, for interviews. And Hannah Lee has all that set up. So remember that at 6 p.m. Um, any other things for the good of the order? Questions? Okay. Well, other than some of us seeing each other tonight, we'll see you at 11 o'clock on Thursday. And this meeting is adjourned.